Today I'm making tuna mayo onigiri. Onigiri is a quick Japanese snack or lunch alternative to a sandwich. Basically, it's a rice bowl. I'm making mine with tuna and mayo today. The full list of ingredients will be in the video description. To get started, I've measured two cups of short grain sushi rice into this bowl. I'm using a rice maker today, so these were measured with my rice cooker's measuring cup. You can also boil this in a pot of water. Before we can cook this, we want to wash off as much of the starch as possible, so I'm pouring some water into my bowl. Maybe a bigger bowl would have been better. And just swishing it around until the water looks milky. Like this. Let's go ahead and drain this. Maybe grab a bigger bowl. Nope. Okay then. Let's repeat this washing process a few more times until the water runs fairly clear. Then we're going to pour our washed and drained rice into the rice cooker. Since I'm making two cups of rice, I'm adding enough water to reach the two cup mark. And I'm going to add just a little extra water, just to the two and a half cup mark. Cover this up, turn it on, and that's it. Let it cook while we get started on our filling. In one bowl, I have one can of tuna, drained. And sometimes I like making these with shredded chicken, so I have about half a breast in the other bowl. Let's start off by adding about two tablespoons of Japanese kewpie mayo to each bowl, some salt to taste, and mixing in. I like this to be fairly moist so it holds together inside the rice bowl. Taste for salt and mayo along the way, adding more if needed. And I'm seasoning both of these the same way. Once the rice is finished cooking, it's going to be really hot. Too hot to form into a nigiri. So I'm transferring it to a large flat dish and smoothing flat to help speed up the cooling process. It should be ready to go in about 5 minutes. Once sufficiently cooled, we're ready to begin assembling our onigiri. Before each, we're going to want to wet our hands in water so the rice doesn't stick. Then, lightly salt to season the rice. Grab a handful of rice, flatten it out onto your palm, now we're making an indent for the filling and placing a small amount into the middle. Next we're going to wrap the rice around it, adding extra on top to cover if needed. We don't want any filling spilling out. Just form this into a ball, then begin shaping it into a triangle using the space between your thumb and the rest of your fingers to shape it and rotate. This one's looking a bit small and thick, so I'm going to press it to make it a little wider then continue shaping the corners till I get a shape I'm happy with. And that's one done. Now repeat with the rest of your rice and fillings. I got about 11 onigiri out of this amount of rice. I like some spicy mayo with my onigiri, so into a bowl I'm adding some sriracha and just a little bit of mayo. I like mine more spicy and red, so I'm keeping a lower ratio of mayo. Just keep mixing and adjusting till you have the color, flavor, and amount that you like. Now for the final touch, we're wrapping our onigiri with a strip of nori or dried seaweed. I'm taking a sheet and cutting it in half, then cutting short strips out of this half sheet. Which will then be placed on the onigiri like this. Unless you want soggy seaweed all over your rice balls, I'd save this step until you're ready to eat. Nori can get pretty chewy if it gets soggy. However, if you're planning on eating all of them now, go ahead and finish wrapping them. This one looks a little crooked. Center the strip of nori on the bottom, then fold the sides up. Perfect. Serve with your spicy mayo and soy sauce for dipping, and enjoy. I post every Thursday. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.